And thanks to David Miscavige, he's figured the whole thing out, and now you have to do this golden age of tech. Okay? So I had to, I was a trained Scientologist. I was told I have to redo everything. I had to rebuy the thing. I had just finished. Yeah, and it redo it again. You have to do it. Okay? And it's like, okay. You know, and you feel it. And they resell the thing with a straight face. And the Scientologists do it over. I mean, that's crazy. Now, when I had bought my training package, they were well, well on the way to getting ready to release the golden age of tech. And they let me buy the thing, encouraged me to hurry up and do it, just in time so they could do it. That's a ripoff. That's unethical. And they claim to be the most ethical group on the planet? That's criminal. Or misleading. To me, it's criminal. I mean, it's awful. Just now, recently, they have the basic books re-released. This is how many books? Maybe 20 books? 15 books? Something like that. These are these basic books, apparently written by L. Ron Hubbard and compiled by people at Golden Era Productions. Okay, it's, you know, maybe a thousand pages, maybe 1,500 pages, all big type, small pages. Okay, there's some interesting data there. If you like that stuff, that's fine. Okay. They changed a few things in these books. Okay. Now, they're telling every Scientologist that they must buy these books again. You know how much they charge? $3,000. $3,000 for 20 books like this. That's, uh, that's crazy. And to me, as I think about it, again, I think that's an indication of mind control, or whatever you want to call it, because they do it. Not only do they do it, they help sell them, and they're all enthusiastic about it. And this is great, which is another interesting thing. You know, as a Scientologist, this is in my humble opinion. The tacit responsibility of a, of a Scientologist is to lie. Because you're a homo novus. You're an example. And of course you still have problems and issues. But you're not supposed to. Because you're clear. You're OT. You understand? And so these people now, when they get these little, oh, the books are re-released, and David Miscavige assures you that's the reason for this little problem that maybe you're having, they secretly go, ah, oh, good. And it just leads to more of the same. Because he's changed a sentence here, a little this, a little that, which also enables them to keep the copyright, incidentally, which I think is interesting. Here's something kind of interesting if we look at this kind of historically. And one of the last things I did as a practicing Scientologist was there was a... I had long since said, I'm not going in session. You know, they kept saying, oh, come on, we'll take you into session for free. I said, man, you guys are making me worse. I said, I wouldn't go in session if you paid me $1,000 an hour. That's how bad it was. Okay? And I could have used 1000 an hour, let me tell you. But I just said, no mas. I cannot do it. Okay? So they said they have these things called the LRH, L. Ron Hubbard, Congresses that have been released. So these are, these are symposiums given by L. Ron Hubbard from 1956, I think it was, maybe 52, four, somewhere around there, through maybe 68, up until the St. Hill Special Brief Briefing Course, right? Anyway, it's maybe about 20 lecture series, 20 lecture series, okay? So I thought, you know what? I got a new dog. He needs to be trained. I'll take a little tape recorder and I'll go out on a walk and I'll walk my dog every morning. I'll listen to a couple of tapes and I'll get in shape. So I got through these tapes pretty fast. And this, of course, the, 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 the idea was to get people to, you know, uh, connect with L. Ron Hubbard, which they call Source, which is very interesting. He's Source. And that's a word to take a look at, you know, that's part of the tech, too. But at any rate, I listened to these lectures, these series of lectures. And the first series of lectures is welcome, and he's very gregarious and charming. And he's basically, the great news is, everybody, I finally got the state of clear tape tapped. I know how to deliver a clear like this. And here's all you have to do. 
And so I know that this new thing was now used to disseminate selling Scientology because we can now deliver the state of clear. Now, with a straight face, I can tell you this, that every series of lectures delivered by this man for the next 10 or 12, 15 years was, guess what, everybody? I've got it. I've got the state of clear tapped. It was the same thing. And I was like, what the hell? This is crazy. They've been doing this since the first day. And we've been buying it. I remember there was a thing David Miscavige did that, because that, uh, at this point I was starting to get uh, like, I can't take this. You guys are, you guys are making me, they, they wanted, they had this thing in the new part of the golden age of tech. They had this thing called uh, uh, a security check, okay, which is basically where you uh, are interrogated to make sure you don't have any crimes in order to be enabled to receive high level auditing or access to the OT levels, okay? And they were asking me these questions and it was going on and on. And I know when things are making me worse. I'm happy to get off a peccadillo. I don't have anything to hide. But when it's asked all different directions and it's taken this and it's costing $50,000, at a certain point, me, and I was very uncommon for most scientists, most of them were just taking it. And everybody was unhappy. And it was, I mean, I'm sure the statistics were crashing. Me, I said, listen, when L. Ron Hubbard died, they said he went off the target too, to start, which was be a new planet, to, to clear that planet. I said to the people, the executives of Scientology, when they told me I had to buy more, I said, I'm not doing any more auditing. I said, I don't care if L. Ron Hubbard comes back from target two and tells me I got to do it, but I'm not doing it. And I did not receive auditing for probably a year and a half. And of course, I was becoming disaffected. Let me tell you something. Finally, about a year and a half later, David Miscavige goes on a, a, a maiden voyage, which is when they go on the ship in the Caribbean, and he has this great release. And so they did a big event. I wasn't there, obviously, because I mean, I was maybe doing a little study and just kind of like licking my wounds at this point. And I say, uh, and they say, Jason, Jason, you got to come in. You got to see this thing. This is just for you. You're going to love this. And I see David Miscavige, and he says, with a broad smile and a puffy chest, he says, I have great news. All those sec checks, we were wrong. Arbitraries are canceled. Arbitraries are canceled, he's declaring. And, and they're like looking at me like, Jason. And the whole crowd gets up, and they're clapping, and they're going crazy like, oh, goody, because I get to save money, and I can now I'm not going to be all messed up in my head. I can maybe get some gains in Scientology. And this is this big announcement, and they're looking at me, and I'm going, huh. He said, man, you make a mistake that makes you probably $250 million, and that's, and that's how you handle it? Like you're some kind of great guy to finally admit? And these Scientologists are up there giving him a standing ovation and crying tears of joy. Something's wrong. So I look at this as I talk to you, I start to realize, see, that's probably why I'm out and they're in. Is that for some reason, I don't know why. You know, I just started to wake up. But let me tell you something, that process took 10 years and about six, $800,000. Okay? So there you go. Um, here's another thought I had. I don't know, I'm not a legal mind or anything like that. And I'm just going to give this to you in closing as some... Uh, something that may be useful.